So what is going on guys and welcome back to episode number 5 of the QPR career mode and we're going to be kicking off this episode with a game up against Wolves at Loftus Road and hopefully it will be a, a game we should win. It is in the cup as uh, you do, as you guys probably do know, Wolverhampton are below us in the league. They are in the, what do we call it, the second division um, in England. So hopefully we should beat these. But Jenny Sally does have a very good chance here. He has a good shot but it was a wonderful save from Ike. Keme, I believe, is in goal for Wolves, and uh, it was a very, very good save from him. Uh, Cranchard tries to get the missing header there, or the picking up the missing pieces, but unfortunately, it was another comfortable save for Ikeme. But there, a wonderful save from uh, Hugo Sessa in the last few minutes of the game, and it went into extra time. But uh, we did have a very good chance to get the final result 88 minutes into the game. Johnson has a good shot, but a wonderful save from Ikeme, diving to his top left hand corner. Otherwise, that would have been a goal of the season from Adam Johnson if that would have went in, but unfortunately, it didn't. And, uh, went out for a corner from the resulting corner we did have a good chance to try and get it but once again Ikeme um, stood up to the block and uh, made a very good save from Cardoso's header uh, but unfortunately we couldn't get that goal but here they did have the next chance in the game it was a very very good header it uh, surprisingly or not it did actually get a clip goes out for a corner Sacco puts a lovely ball in the box or it comes to Davis throw Davis puts a lovely ball in the cross fizzes it across the ball and uh, what a good header there from Kevin Doyle his three cup goals and 98 minute so we are now facing an uphill battle if we wanted to win this one we were going to have to really step up together and we're going to have to score some we have to score a wonder goal basically to try and beat Ikeme in the uh, Wolverhampton goal but here Junior Hoyler picks up the ball does amazingly well stops sprints past a player and Junior Hoylet, what a fantastic goal from Junior Hoylet. It comes off the inside of the post and in the 117th minute, Junior Hoylet gets an absolutely scorcher of a goal to put us back on level terms up against Wolves. And what a goal it was. As you can see from the replay, it started um, more in towards and it curled out uh, towards the far post. And here we went into penalties. It was our first penalty shootout in this series. Nico Cranchar, the first person to step up for us, and of course Nico Cranchar is going to convert, but I was a little bit risky there. I thought the keeper had saved it, but thankfully for me, he didn't get a good enough, strong enough hand on it, and uh, the ball did then uh, creep into the back of the net. But they scored a pretty easy goal straight down the middle as Julio Cesar went to the right-hand side. Genius was the next person to step up, and Genius played really, really well in this game, and he tops it off with a goal in the penalty shootout. The next player to step up was Jamie O'Hara, the former Tottenham man, steps up to try and beat Julio Cesar, and he misses Julio, Hes Julio Cesar with an absolutely delightful save, and we had now got the advantage in this penalty shootout. Odalusi was the next person to step up, and Odalusi scores a very, very good goal, leaving Ikeme no chance whatsoever, even if he dived that way. Kevin Dill, their match uh, scorer, steps up and he cannot convert either. The nerves got to him and he fires it over the bar. Thankfully for me, it wasn't on target and it went over the bar. Junior Hoylet, the the hero, steps up and what a fantastic goal from Junior Hoylet. And that was the goal that won us the tie up against Wolves. So it was more... It was a little bit more difficult than we actually expected. It took a moment of genius from Junior Hoylet to win us that match. And thankfully, we do have players in the QPR squad that are capable of doing it. And Junior Hoylet is just one of them that is truly capable of stepping up to the block when's needed. And what a goal he scored. And uh, as you see there, we win 4-1 on penalties. So pretty much we absolutely hammered them on penalties. As you see there, Junior Hoylet does get man of the match with a 7.8 rating. And I actually believe he deserves... Uh, man of the match, sorry, uh, because I thought he was the best player, but Ikeme, in actual fact, did got man of the match, so it was going to be close between them two. Our next game was at Loftus Road, once again, up against Sheffield Wednesday, so the pitch was taking a little bit of a hound in after two quick games in a quick succession. The pitch was going to be churning up a little bit, but it looked okay. Our groundsman had done well uh, to, um, what do we call it, uh, maintain the pitch. But Odd does have a very good chance. Uses speed and strength and uh, his shot power as well. It was a lovely, lovely shot but unfortunately it was um, a little bit wild and it didn't go in the back of the net. But here, the sloppy play from uh, Sheffield Wednesday plays the ball to Townsend. Townsend has a has a shot, but a wonderful save from the Sheffield Wednesday keeper to keep the scoreline at nil-nil. Remy here does have a very good chance. It's got to be 1-0, but no, the keeper makes a wonderful save. Come to Junior Hoylet. Junior Hoylet, what a fantastic goal from Junior Hoyler. That's two amazing goals in two consecutive games from Junior Hoyler. As you can see from the replay here, this was an absolute scorcher. He had power, accuracy, everything on it. 
it went up and dipped at the last minute underneath the crossbar and what a goal in the 42nd minute and that was the only goal of the game so Junior Hoylet done it again for me he scored to get us back on level terms to take its penalties against Wolves he then scored the winning penalty up against Wolves he's now scored the winning goal up against Sheffield Wednesday this time Anua gets man of the match but Junior Hoylet once again getting a very good rating and we do get an email from Nathan Ake there saying that he's very very happy about the amount of time playing time that I'm giving him and uh, that's always good to see when a player comes to you expect or saying that he's happy with the amount of playing time he's getting and Nathan Ake's not the best player in the in my squad he's probably one of the worst rated players in my squad but Nathan Ake is one of those players that I think I prefer to play Nathan Ake than Cardoso because Cardoso um, is 61 rated and Dunn is 73 rated but Dunn is extremely slow and you need a player like Cardoso alongside him otherwise it just won't work but here Charlie Austin has a wonderful head it was a good save and Charlie Austin rises above the the I don't I can't remember the teams now I think it's Dagenham no, it can't be Dagenham, but Doncaster. Ra raises above the Doncaster and what defense. a fantastic goal it was as well there. He managed to raise above all the defenders and slot that one into the empty net as the keeper had uh, just made a brilliant save from Charlie Austin's header. Johnson does have a very good chance to make it 2-0, uh, but his shot was expertly saved from the Doncaster Rovers keeper there. We do get the resulting corner. Unfortunately, nothing come off from the corner and we had to uh, go back to square one and try and uh, build another attack. Actually here, Traore does put a good ball in the box. It comes to Richard Dunn. He has a very good header, but unfortunately, just a little bit much power on the top and it hits the uh, roof of the net uh, but it wasn't the right side of the net so a little bit disappointed that that didn't end up in the back of the net to get two uh, goals in front but we do get our two goals in front as you see here Nico Cranshaw runs down the wing plays an absolutely delightful ball in the box it comes to Charlie Austin and what a power header that is from Charlie Austin his second goal in the game he's now going for his hat trick Gianni Zai is there to congratulate him with an absolutely beautiful header as you see there that is a hell of a good header from Charlie Austin and I believe that's his first goal in the game as well for me and he, he does pick up his hat trick Nico Cranshaw once again running down the wing what a delightful ball from Nico Cranshaw comes Charlie Austin what a delightful header so he scored three goals from headers a hat trick from headers um, and what a fantastic goal it was as well Charlie Austin within 39 minutes had got a hat trick for the club and it is I really do like scoring hat tricks uh, because it makes it just gives that little bit of a boost to the team especially when you're not on the high uh, we haven't been performing as well as expected recently and I was very disappointed that uh, we didn't win um, or we didn't win a few of the games that we have uh, gone ahead and lost but unfortunately I do pull one back here actually the painter does get the goal for them they put a good ball across um, Macheda the guy on loan from Manchester United uh, heads the ball back across it comes to painter and painter slots the ball underneath Julio Cesar I thought Julio Cesar should have saved that to be honest but I think he had nothing to do in the game and he just I don't know what it was probably not paying attention but here in the last minute of the game Nico Cranshaw goes for an absolute scorcher of a free kick he does hit it extremely well not enough power in it unfortunately and it was a good save from the goalkeeper and that was how the game finished we ended up winning 3-1 up against Doncaster Rovers Charlie Austin with a hat-trick from headers so we end up winning that one there actually three points are getting taken back to Loftus Road and I was very pleased that so uh, during this episode we have won every game so that is uh, we beat Wolves and we got six points in the league which is very very good to see as you see there um, Charlie Austin does of course get man of the match with a 9.5 rating and what a performance it was as well from Charlie Austin I'll leave you with squad report here it is the first squad report that has been in this series so far so if you do want to see squad reports they'll probably be out at the beginning of every month or at the end of every month I mean game wise not real time wise Odd Lucy there uh, does show signs of very good improvement and uh, Ryan Gold unfortunately hasn't gone up yet but I think Ryan Gold will be going up so that is it for this video I'll leave you with a scrub report so thank you so much for watching if you did like it make sure you hit that like button down below as it really really does help my channel out and um, I hope to see you very shortly for the next video thank you bye bye Charlton Athletic with five points.